A well-educated, business-savvy woman is manipulated by a con man into believing that he can make her dog immortal. There, I save you all four episodes of the docu-series Bad Vegan on Netflix. But the real gold here is how we can learn about manipulation techniques used by cults and in the end spot all the inconsistencies of this self-proclaimed victim. Welcome back my body language buddies. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas, I'm the body language guy and it would be great if you join us by just liking this video, subscribing and hitting that bell. Let's get down to it. Sarma Melangelis was a graduate of economics that landed a gig on Wall Street and in a matter of months realized that finances was not her thing, so she made a hard pivot into food and hospitality business. She met Matthew Kenny back then, then started a romantic relationship and together they founded Pure Food and Wine, a restaurant that was focused exclusively on raw vegan food. It was an instant hit with celebrities such as Owen Wilson and Alec Baldwin. And that must be the reason he's got that face like he needs a good steak. But before we continue, let's see what your intuition can catch in this clip where she's talking about the time she had to convince investors to keep pumping money into the restaurant. Somehow I just was very vague about it and I was like, there's some issues and money's gone and I need to reopen the restaurant and whatever. You know, how do I explain? I've, I'm married to this guy and he's forced me to wire all this money away and I don't know where it is, but hey, can you give me money to reopen the restaurant? And that, you know, felt really sickening, but my priority was getting the restaurant reopened. There's something off, right? Later in this video, you're gonna understand why you felt that way. Well, business was blooming until Kenny decided to opt out, both of the relationship and the restaurant, leaving Melangelis to run it on her own which was quite demanding because they still had close to two million dollars in debt to pay from the original investment. But here's where it gets weird because this mystery man with the totally non-made up name Shane Fox began popping up in Melangeli's Twitter timeline. Remember that I mentioned Alec Baldwin? Well, it so happens that she noticed that Baldwin and Mr. Fox had more than a few friendly and witty exchanges and that caught her attention. Now, maybe today, someone having friendly exchanges with Alec Baldwin on Twitter would be an instant red flag. But back in 2011, when he... Mm, no, wait, that would have been a red flag too. In fact, Baldwin met his wife, Ilaria, at Pure Food and Wine. By the way, I hope Ilaria could remember the word cucumber at a vegan restaurant. But not long after, the quartet of Baldwin, Ilaria, Melangelis, and this mysterious Mr. Fox were tweeting together. So far, Melangelis did not know how Mr. Fox really looked like, besides a handful of photos that he sent her. And this is the first clue about her emotional state at that moment. They apparently just text a bit, played a bit of online games together, and a few weeks later, well, she proclaimed publicly on Twitter that she was in love with Mr. Fox. Yeah, without having met the guy in the flesh. Now, you can be playful on the internet and crack jokes with this kind of matters, but it's a bit dangerous when you do it with someone that A, you don't know, and B, looks like a cousin from The Sopranos. Just to be clear, it's not that he told her, out of the blue, that he could make her and her dog immortal. That would have been the strangest drunk text ever. But instead, this was a gradual manipulation that started with the very simple fact of making her believe that he was some kind of a spy or private soldier. So he couldn't reveal much of his background to her for the sake of her own security. Yeah, it sounds like an episode of Tinder Dates Gone Wrong with a good dose of what the f were you thinking, girl? I mean, who falls for something like that? Now, there is something that has to be said about her education and her business acumen. Many people claim that they find implausible that a woman with her professional background would fall for a scam that started like this. And in that regard, it's important to remember that any kind of manipulation will attack your emotions. Your professional experience doesn't matter, your intelligence doesn't matter, your academic background doesn't matter, just like that physicist who was scanned into drug trafficking because he really, really thought that Denise Milani was onto him. Yeah, wrong head, mate. So it was not surprising that a woman that was mostly on her own, whose stress life was dedicated to a restaurant that had a lot of debt to pay and had issues with relationships because she never had the opportunity to process her parents' divorce, would fall for this kind of mystery man. 
And the mystery is important because that's one of the strongest magnets of female attention. But it's still hard to grasp the scope of how the manipulation followed. It so happens that, shocking, Shane Fox was not his real name, but Anthony Stranges. And the reason he was using a fake name is because he was doing all these supposed operations in Africa and the Middle East, and he had, you know, to cover up his real identity. Of course, all this was just a facade that he started to craft since they were just texting. And this is one of the dangerous things of texting. This kind of people most probably would not dare to say this kind of bollocks with a straight face in person, so it's far easier to start doing it with instant messaging. At the same time, women have this tendency of filling in the blanks in the most outrageous ways possible. For example, if a strangest told her that he would be deployed in Africa, she would craft the complete move in her mind without any help. This kind of manipulation also benefits from the digital footprint that people leave on the internet. At some point, Strangest claimed that he could guess by, I don't know, psychic abilities, the reasons why she had named her dog Leon and he guessed correctly on the first try. That it was named after Jean Reno's character on the movie Leon the Professional. What really happened is that she had mentioned that same fact on her blog a long time ago, and he just found it and made it seem like he had powers. That same digital footprint, whether it's a blog or Twitter or Instagram, can give you a very good idea of people's personality and character. For example, it didn't take long until he realized that she really loved her dog, that it was really important to her. Now, she named it after Leon the Professional, a movie in which a girl with no family seeks the protection of an old and experienced man. If she named her dog after that movie, then you can guess that this theme resonated with her. So that's another way to craft the manipulation scheme. In fact, one of the concepts that he started to use is that he was part of a secret organization and he would like her to be part of it. And the process included wiring money to him, among other, well, intimate tasks. What was the name of the organization? The Family. Yeah, not hard to imagine that such a concept was a trigger for her. Now, I understand that you can have doubts about these claims, that how can a woman be so easily manipulated this way? Because the amounts of money that she had to wire were always increasing, and something that I haven't told you yet is that yes, they met in person, and yes, they married one year after. I suggested that you watch that clip at the start of this video so you could have a glimpse at the way she talks about all these events. Because that voice inflection, that body language is pretty much the same along all the documentary. She wants to come off as, look how naive and stupid I was. But the problem is that so many people have a hard time believing how someone can be that naive to the point of driving her own restaurant to the ground, the business that she created with her own hands to feed some kind of aspiration of joining this interdimensional family so she and her dog could live forever. Man, what kind of grass was that? Imagine how the personnel of the restaurant felt when they were not paid for months and she was sharing all her Europe travels on Instagram. It's not like she was trapped in a dungeon or anything. Now, one should remember that cults exist, and cults use the exact same manipulation techniques that strangers use on Melengelis. Gaslighting by distorting your perception of reality, for example. She also exploited her loneliness, he figured out her daddy issues, and used a very gradual approach to introducing weird concepts. For example, if I tell you something moderately weird today, you might have a hard time believing it. That's normal. But if I tell you something weirder tomorrow, then whatever I said today is not gonna sound that weird in comparison. And if I say something even more outrageous the day after, then the two first concepts will not sound as wacky and so on. If there's anything to get from Sarma Melengeli's story is that manipulation will always start in a way that you will not notice, and the manipulator will gradually turn up the heat until you will experience the sunk cost fallacy, which is our tendency to follow through an end of war if we have already invested time, money or effort into it, no matter the cost so far. So, whether Melingalis was part of it or not, it's always better to learn to avoid this kind of toxic personalities from the get-go. 
If you want to refine your observation skills, all you have to do is download my 100 battle language tips right in the description of this video. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas and it will always be a pleasure, my battle language buddies. Much love and bliss.